our fees start with water. Start with then the first foods is uh, salmon, then deer, then roots and berries, and back to water again. And that's kind of been our, one of our formulas that we've uh, had that uh, you take care of these gifts from the Creator and uh, they'll take care of you. They would come home with dried fish, dried deer meat, all kinds of roots and berries. And they would uh, have all this food and, and either, even though they had all this food, they would don't take in people or relatives who, who were, didn't have a home. And, um, and they lived on, on this way all their lives. And it was uh, beautiful. We had an amazing system of clouds and rain. And I think we understood every kind of water there was in our universe, whether it flowed on the ground or whether it came from the sky. And we always had a way to deal with that as a life process. So we understood every molecule as it came from the sky. And we knew how to live in it. And there was a place called McCoy Creek. It's all dried up now. Great big stream, beautiful holes for fish where the trees used to fall into the creek bottom and it would dam it up and these big pools would form, which was what we used to have on Umatilla on my reservation. Now they keep the river all cleared out of all debris and you don't find those pools anymore. I don't, I don't know what fishing's like. I don't fish anymore. I don't, and I'd start dying out fishing when I was still on the reservation. Because they were just, they, those pools were just no longer there. But that McCoy Creek, man, there were trout, you know, a trout a foot long in those creeks were pretty good fish. Fish all day and long. We'd eat fish every day. Water is the giver of life. If we don't have any water, we have no life. We need to uh, cleanse the land, to you know, quench the land's thirst, because the land's thirsty too. It's hard to put it into words, my love for this place. This is where my, all of my old, old people are buried. And when my time on this world ends, that's where I want to be, because the sound, even though the roar of the river, the free flowing has been limited, but it's still my homeland. Those connections, you know, that kind of really intimate connection to your place, I think really changes how you feel about it. And, you know, we're compelled to have people understanding it in that way or looking at our place that way because we really do believe they're gonna treat it differently think that has to be the case and you know we want people to even have a sense of ownership in it even though that's our stories I mean it's the stories from the place and it used to be that where you were from is who you are nowadays there's all kinds of different ways to define who you are where you know what you are but the reality is, is for 10,000 years around here, what you were or who you were was about where you were born and raised. Didn't have nearly as much to do with your blood. It was the other. And so in that case, these people that are here and gonna be here, we need them to feel that, that kind of you know, connection to, to our home and their home. We have to teach people to uh, slow down and stop and think about it. You know, caring for something, caring for yourself, caring about uh, your elders and your children and, the, and everything around you, all that lives and everything, caring about it. I care about it. Maybe I can share that with you and uh, maybe you learn 
about what I care about and why I care about it. And maybe you take that and have some insight and, and put that into the fabric of your life that you can take it. And maybe that there are others that will witness this and take that and put it into their life and, and have an insight and understanding of what it's like to be alive, you know, to care about something. And they can teach themselves and their children and their grandchildren that they too can do this. <laughs>